After many trials and tribulations, we fitted the windowsill that folds up and down. Alas, we left our breakfast bar wing unsupported. Only the efforts of brave humans kept it from crashing down. Friends! Welcome back! Thanks for joining me again. So, this project starts with some car dismantling. It meant a lot of cleaning, but also lots of nice parts for upcycling. This is what we've got. It's like the wishbone suspension swing arm thing. I'm not 100% sure what it's called. Uh, it's, a, it's quite a nice casting. I like the... I like the shape, it's got a good heft to it. I need to get rid of this, which was once, I think, coupled to the anti-roll bar. So the task is going to be fixing this big hardened 16mm pin to the wall. And I'll rummage through my scraps a bit, and what I came up with was I could either use Something like this, just a bit of box, drill a hole in it, put some screws in, but that seemed way too easy. So instead, what I found were these bits, which used to be uh, holding a crankshaft down. They're sort of more in fitting with the automotive reclaimed bits. Kind of theme. Essentially what I need to do is mill, drill or somehow get a little hole round about there. So what I started thinking I would do is put two of these together, clamp them up and put them in the forge or chuck on the lathe. This is the closest size I could find to fitting nicely in there. So that gets dialed up and centered in the four drill chuck on the lathe before turning down. To make the parting off easier and just to save some time, I'm just drilling a fairly big 20mm hole in the center of this in increments. Here's the nice ear wax cutting wax stuff that I use. And there's something about parting off when it works, it's just really satisfying. The ribbons from that, they weren't awful, but I think we could improve that either with feed, faster feed or speed. For this base cut, I'm going dry carbide, one millimeter depth of cut. And I'll slow it down a bit here so you can see the ribbons coming off. They're curling up really nicely, those chips. Excellent finish as well. The parting off tool doesn't go deep enough, so it's back to the old elbow grease to get this off. So there's that off. Tidy up that piece. Then I just thought I'd have a go at tidying up the face of these, what will be mounting bracket things. Welcome to my slightly corroded welding enclosure. It's an old water tank that needed to be cut in half to remove from someone's loft. It's turned out to be really handy for things like this and grinding and containing sparks. Because these bits are some kind of cast iron and I'm welding them to steel, I just needed to preheat them then before getting on with the welding. I'm honestly not sure how this is going to work out, I'm not really experienced in welding cast iron at all, so I'm just doing things that seem to be the best and that I've read seem to be good. I'm making two of these to make a total of four brackets all together. This is my attempt to get them to cool down very slowly, which should reduce any stresses and strains in the material. It's just some KO wall I had knocking around from a different furnace project. It's been two days. Not hot anymore, surprisingly enough. Doesn't look like they've cracked, which is pretty good. So yeah, I'm 
pretty happy with that. This should be a little bit interesting. Uh, 0.7mm depth of cut. So, a lesson here. That seems to have achieved very little and broken the carbide into it. So, it seems to have massively hardened it welding from the cast iron to the mild steel. Okay, so the lathe is not dealing well. Oh, uh, that's that. Are done? <coughs> I think we have switched to the cord. Is... Hey, somewhere around here we need to drill a hole. But where exactly and how exactly is the question. What we'll do is measure up from the surface, add a couple of mil. And I just need to check that when the swing arm pivots out from the surface, that's still got clearance. Yeah, that's working. Okay, so 35 it is. Basically, we need to get it lined up and coming up, just sneaking up to that line with the mill. What we have here is a very large chunk of metal. It's a big milling vice that's way oversized for my puny milling machine. Nonetheless, I've cleaned both the surfaces, the bottom of the, the vice and the top of the mill table. We're going to try and put it on without destroying anything. I really should have got help to do this because it's so heavy and I don't want to dent the table, but it seems to work. Very cool. Uh, to be honest, I've no idea what this bit here does. Uh, it's coated in like a thick layer of gunge. Putting some oil. solution to that. That was one tight bolt. So with the new mill vice somewhat set up we're now just marking off sneaking up to that point checking that we are actually milling in the right place before then we can proceed to really have a go at this and finding out that we've got a terrible mistake here because it's so hard at that point we can't actually mill it okay so here's where we are we've gone down to where the weld starts on that side and as soon as we get to that area i've just about managed to get through there with the carbide drill bit an eight mil one but this needs to be a 16 mil hole don't have any other carbide related tooling to get me through there um, and everything's just blunting, getting munched up and not going anywhere and rocking the machine all about the place. And we get down to that weld bead. So I don't know what's happened, whether it's interacted in some way with the cast iron, with the mild steel or, or the welding wire or something, but it seems to have created some kind of diamond hard impervious layer. Get over this, I'm putting them in the stove and leaving them for a nice continuous burn. Well, what do you know, that actually worked. Uh, it's not the best hole, but it's still a hole. After being annealed in the fire, they're quite grubby, so we're just tidying up the surfaces, making them bits or bling and shiny on this sander. The 60 grit sandpaper does a really good job at this. And then it's time to clean up the swing army thing. I'm just using an angle grinder with a wire brush attachment just to get most of the rust off. 
gives a really like nice industrial kind of look. It, it's pretty cool. I've just got to get in there with a smaller wire brush just to get into the nooks and crannies. Ever since I ruined a pair of trousers by getting rust dust kind of ingrained in them and it changed the colour permanently no matter how much I wash them. I always have a room fan sort of blowing behind me even when I'm doing this sort of semi outside in the shed to just blow the dust away from me. Anyway, after that we're set up in our little indoor enclosure and it's got to be indoors in this winter weather. I think this for two minutes, <laughs> okay. Because I really like the look of it as it is, I'm just using a clear lacquer just so it won't rust indoors, it's a UV resistant one. It gets sort of three thinnish coats and same with those two little mountings we made. More thinner coats are better but it all takes time. So I'm using these big concrete bolts uh, that require an 8mm hole and they just screw straight into the masonry. I found them to be pretty secure. At this point I realised I'd made a slight miscalculation and I just need to drill a bit more relief in that top windowsill bit to fit the swing arm actually in and so it would swing past its mounting. Hey! It swings! Just one final thing to do here and that's fit this little block that will sort of secure the swing arm in place and hold it to the right level. Well there you have it guys, thanks for sticking with me through that. I appreciate your company. It looks like it's going to work really well. The main purpose for this was to get things right out of the way so we had a room free to do crazy things like acro yoga that we do. So I see some fold up bar stools in the future. For now, thanks for watching. Please subscribe, share with your friends that might like upcycling and see you next time.